Uh, we are really pumped to be here today. I'm the channel manager for the Southeast with Call One. We have uh, somewhat of a constituency with us here today. We've been going throughout Florida on a pretty voracious road trip, and there is just a ton of buzz that, uh, that is out there with what we're doing, and we're stoked to share it with you guys today. But I'll just start with a quick introduction to let you know who is in the room today. We have uh, none, none other than Kevin Weber in the back there, uh, one of our uh, executives at, uh, at Call One and uh, steering the helm, and we're so, so excited to, that he could be here with us, and thanks for making the time. We also have Jeff Hossman, who's our sales engineer, and uh, he's based out of Florida as well. And then uh, last but not least, we have Gabe Rosales, who's our director of sales, and I'm just pumped to get to introduce you to, to Gabe. He's gonna tell you a little bit about Call One and the story, and then the second hour, after you get done with yours, then I'm going to roll on into some other things. So let's, uh, he's used to big crowds. If you could just clap, it'd be great. All right, Gabe, hey. If you don't know John, that was a good introduction of himself there. Uh, so call one, you know, what I want to accomplish today is really give you guys an education of who we are, because I would assume, asking the room, does anyone know who call one is? Right? So not a, not a big crowd here, right, um, that knows Call One. So I want to educate you guys on who we are and what we're trying to do and then what our target base is, right? We're not every carrier to everyone, right? So when do you think Call One? When do you use Call One? And if I could leave, there, leave here with that, then I'll be pretty excited. Um, so connect with more yes. That means a lot to us. That means a flexible carrier, right? Um, sometimes some of the bigger carriers put you in a box. And you say, hey, can we do this? Whether it be coterminous contracts, whether it be some different language on the SLAs, you get a lot of no's, place, you know, start from a place to know. So connect more, more yes, is, it really rings true to us. Big carrier is giving you big problems. So what we like to call is big carrier fatigue, right? Does anybody have any ideas what big carrier fatigue would be? Right, maybe billing issues, long install timelines, right? Cookie cutter solutions, long hold times. There's not that CLEC presence there used to be, right? When I sold, I started in 03 selling as an out, outside sales guy, hitting 60 doors a day. And there was 10 to 15 CLEX in every door I walked in. Today, there's mergers, there's acquisitions. That's just not possible and it's not around anymore. You're kind of limited to who you have. And a lot of these CLEX that were CLEX are now big carriers too, right? They've merged, they've acquired, they've acquisitioned. And so it's a different feel for them. And it's a different feel to the end user. And the end user feels it, right? So we're feeling that nationwide CLEX base. That's what we want to do. We're in a league of our own. We've been around for 26 years. Even though a lot of you don't know us, we were a Chicago-based company for 26 years. Started very heavily in the TDM space. Moved to selling on-prem phone systems. We're a very large provider of Shortel. Then we, used, we moved into a Cisco IWAN and a Cisco call manager. And we also sold a hosted Shortel. That was the past. And the reason I bring that up is because our back office has experience doing that. New products are great and they're easy to sell. Right? So if I'm a company and I have a new product, it's really easy to sell, all the advantages. The hard part is getting it installed. Right? I don't know if you guys, how long you've been in telecom, 35 years, you've probably never had a bad install. They're usually pretty easy, seamless, we like to say plug and play, right? Same day, right? So that's the big, the big, the big thing here is that there's not a CLEC that answers the phone, that has that small company feel, and that's what we're trying to provide. And our back office has been doing this for many years. Our tenure with our project management is I won't go into what we did yesterday, but it's a very long time, right? So they've been with us five, 10, 15 years, and these are real project managers. A unique thing about Call One also is we control that middle mile. And does anybody know what I mean by middle mile? Does everybody have a good idea of that? So we have NNIs and multiple carriers at multiple core pops. So we are not just going in and reselling a circuit and aggregating those circuits. And why is that important? So <clears throat> when you control the middle mile, if I have an IP circuit that I'm selling to 10 customers at 10 different locations, and they have a Texas location, they have a Florida location, if I'm selling them a straight IP pipe resale, how do I get to, from location Texas to location Florida? I use the public internet, right? That's scary to a lot of people. When you control the middle mile, we're using our NNI with that last mile carrier, hitting our core pop, transferring over, going to our other core pop, using the last mile to deliver that packet, never hitting the public internet. So it's important when you're talking to a hospital or a bank and they're saying, hey, we're going to leave MPLS and go SD-WAN, okay? Do you want to sell a reseller that's going to hit the internet on multiple pops and not know where it's going to go? Or do you think that customer's going to want to stay on our network, a carrier MPLS, if you will? So controlling that middle mile does separate us from the aggregators out there, the people that say, hey, we'll go buy a bunch of stuff and we'll resell it to you. So it's important that you understand that that's what we do. We have NNIs with all the big carriers, right? 
I know in Florida, we, we're, we're continuing to grow. We have the AT&Ts, the Comcast, the, the Frontiers, the Time Warner Spectrums. We're all in and eyed with them, and we can bring in multiple layers of fiber for them. So if you have a carrier that wants AT&T fiber, and then a, another secondary provider fiber, we can bring that input on the same bill and run it over our network. Also, it allows us to control QoS and COS. That's important when you're delivering priorities such as voice, right? They want to know that across that network, you're delivering QoS and COS. <clears throat> The motto here and the kind of the theme we live by is discover, design, deliver. What does that mean? It's three Ds, it rhymes. Good job marketing. But discover means we're gonna be out on the front end with you. Myself, John, Jeff, we're gonna go in and we're gonna figure out what your customer needs. If you have a, co if you have a company that just sells UCAS and they come and talk to your customer and ask your customer an hour worth of questions, what are they gonna sell when they already f answer all those questions? Probably UCAS, right? Because it's the only product they can sell. When we come in, we're gonna to talk to your customers and understand where they're going and what they need. So if they're not ready for UCAS, great. We can give them SIP trunks. If, they, if, they, if they're not ready for SIP, we can make that a PRI handoff. If your customer's not ready to move to SD-WAN yet, we can build an MPLS network. And oh yeah, we control the network, so midway through, we can make that MPLS circuit now an IP circuit when they are ready to go to SD-WAN. Instead of locking them into a three-year contract with MPLS and they're there as they grow circuits. So there's a lot of flexibility in that discover option. So we can and I'll show you the, the, the slide that has our products, but there's a lot of different products we can do. So we want to discover what you need, then we want to come in and we want to design that solution with myself, John, sales engineering, core engineering, and then we want to deliver it. Okay, so I'm gonna break each one of those down. The discover, obviously we come in, we talk to you, we see what's important for that business, right? We are a solutions type sell. We want to get in front of as many customers as we can for you, right? We are probably not gonna be the company that wins the quote war. Right? So if you put us on a page with three different people and you say, hey, I need a 100 meg circuit in the middle of downtown and I need the cheapest provider, probably not going to be us. Right? Can we compete there? Are we competitive? Absolutely. But it's probably not going to be our core strength and we're not bringing value to you there. We want to be a solutions provider and our people, like John, like my other channel managers, like Jeff, like myself, we bring value. We have an experience of sitting in front of customers and delivering solutions and selling them complicated solutions. We're not just selling voice and data. There's things that have changed in this industry and people need other solutions. That's where the design comes in. We figure it out, we understand, okay, hey, do, this is what the customer wants, this is what the IT guy wants, and this is what the budget dictates, right? So the IT guy wants the whole nine yards, the full UTM, IDS, IPS, and the CFO wants to save money. So what do we have to design that solution somewhere in the middle, right? And the deliver is big. This is the part that is missing in telecom today. This is the white space we want to fill. A boutique customer experience when the customer signs the contract all the way until they stay with us for as long as they stay with us. So obviously John, myself, Jeff, we're that front end of that. Then the customer, once they sign, gets a project manager. That project manager does something that's really crazy. They give out their phone number and you can call them. And they answer the phone and they talk and everything. It's really weird. So, a lot of times you get an 800 number, you get some sent off to a different country, they open a ticket, you can't find your project manager. Each customer will have a project manager, does bi-weekly calls, weekly calls, we have smart sheets that we share with, the, with other customers, they can update, send it back to us. It's a very honed process. And like I said, these people have been with the company 10 or 15 years, and they've been installing phone systems, hosted systems, and SD-WAN for five to 10 years, right? We installed Cisco Call Manager, which I don't know if anyone's ever done that, but it's a pretty complicated system to install. Cisco iWAN was pretty complicated. Those project managers did all of those things. Now we've moved our own platform, which is the Meta Switch on the UCAS, and Versa for the SD-WAN, which we'll touch on in a little bit. Once that's done, right, the project's gone good, they've had the project manager we've got installed, you then get an account manager. That account manager is there for everything from a bill review to adding 13 IP addresses. Right? Obviously, if it's a customer that wants a new location and a whole new upgrade, then we'll obviously bring sales back in and John and myself back in and yourself back in, the agent. But that account manager is there to take some of those calls that maybe you don't want to take when you're on the road and they want to add 13 IP addresses, they can call their account manager. When they want to go over their bill and they say, why, you know, the bill's this and it was supposed to be that, that's your account manager, right? Quarterly reviews with big customers. So they're a big customer. They go in and say, hey, how are we doing? What's up? Talk to us. The account management team is very, very important with that. Then lastly, we have a knock. That knock is 24 by 7, 365, and they are, they are call one employees, and wait for it, they're based in the United States, right? It's tough, tough to do today, right? USA. Based in the United States, and since we control that middle mile, they're on the network with you too. So when you call in, they can go to that edge device, whether it be a Cisco 
Router, whether it be an SD-WAN box, they can go and they can see analytics on that device. If it's SD-WAN, obviously you can see it through the SD-WAN analytics. If it's a Cisco box, we use PRTG on every box we sell. So they can go in, see the analytics, see the jitter, see the latency, and have a real conversation with the customer instead of calling, opening a ticket, three weeks later you get a port open for a phone that you, need, you could have done in 10 minutes, right? So the biggest thing here is the local support and the support that it feels like when you answer the phone or you call, they're gonna answer and work with you. That's the deliver piece. Don't worry, I just sweat a lot, I'm not nervous. If some of you are feeling bad for me, you're like, this guy's killing, he's looking like he's a little sweaty. Uh, just a big guy. Every solution, one strong partner. So we do a little bit of everything, right? We do the UCAS, which is a meta platform, which we'll go into a little more in depth in a little bit. We do internet data. I don't know, you connected to the internet, I think, is, I think it's gonna take off, but we'll see. Um, we do ethernet, we do copper, we, do, we resell DSL, LTE backup, we resell coax, so we could come in and give one solution to your customer. We do SD-WAN, which is a, a versatile platform, which I'll talk about. We do voice. We do that through a SIP, a uh, native SIP, which we can then hand off PRI or analog if we need to using an ADTRAN. Managed services, like I said, the SD-WAN, the UCAS, but also those managed routers on site. Use your Cisco and they're tied with PRTG so we can see analytics. And then continuity services. Here's the internet data as we do broadband, DSL, fiber, copper, ethernet over copper, ethernet over hybrid fiber coax, which is a good product. I don't know if you guys have seen that. A lot of the metro areas, it's basically the Metro E product you can get. UCAS, I'm gonna let John talk a little bit about UCAS. He's our UCAS expert, but we do have a meta platform, which is a little different than some of your other carriers that are using a broad software, more traditional platform. So I'll let John talk a little bit about that, and then I'll get into SD WAN after that, and then we'll do the demo. So John? Cool. Thanks, Gabe, that's awesome. Um, I'm going to answer a question that no one asked, when did I get in the business? Uh, and that is when I was 19 years old, after a short stint in a boy band that didn't work out, I got into telecom. <laughs> thank, God. Yeah, thank God it didn't work out, right? But that one's lost weight, just think about going back I, but, but we're going to get that band back together and you guys are all it's invited. Gonna be soon. It's going to be at my grandma's house, it's a big deal. Um, but let's talk about hosted. I could probably host a support group for like VoIP Anonymous, um, and we could share our stories and our pain and uh, our brokenness, uh, broken promises, um, you know, and, and it would be pretty fun. I think I probably should do that. But um, look for me at the next channel show. We might, might have like a group um, therapy session. But I've been selling hosted for over a decade, and I absolutely love the product. Um, it's, it's been good. It's been good to me. And it's been good to a lot of you in the room, and it's been bad to a lot of you in the room. And so one of the things I would share from my perspective of uh, selling it at high level, at the enterprise level, um, is that um, Broadsoft is Cilantro, even before Broadsoft, was really the platform I've spent the majority of my time on. So I didn't have really a look under the curtain, so to speak, on other platforms. So <clears throat> as I um, moved into this role with Call One, it was refreshing to, to get to see something different from my perspective. Um, so one of the things, that, and Gabe alluded to it, is that how, how flexible and really streamlined this, this platform is. Uh, it's, it's really easy, and you can follow the customer pretty much where they want to go. So uh, there's applications they want, you can, you can follow them pretty easily where they want to go. So that's, that's one of the things I'd say. And then the other thing I've seen from an evolution perspective is I used to plug in a phone and people would be in wonder with me. You know, you are amazing. You had six people in and then none of them could get their phone to work. And, and now we know that's no longer a case and anybody with a, you know, a, a VVX 310 or 410 with a old school 401, sorry, 411, 401, uh, can plug it in and, and like, look, we have a phone that works. So it, we lost the sizzle on that one, right? And so we're always looking for some sizzle in this room. And then it was, I can do video and voice. And no one ever wanted it, but they liked to see it in the sales presentation and it helped me win deals. And it was some sizzle, but then everybody's kind of doing video and it ends up like a me too thing. And so from my limited perspective or whatever you want to call it, my experience, what I've seen is kind of the, this, the next thing that's exciting to talk about in the hosted space is a real integrated collaboration suite. And like that's, that's really that next thing you can talk about because soft phone yawn, uh, you can have the phone at your house yawn, and it's tough to find something in a really crowded hosted space that stands out. And so one of those things that stand out with our product line is, is our collaboration suite, and it is sweet. 
it is really sweet and it's really smooth and it allows you to, to manage, create, start, stop, schedule meetings from your mobile device. It bridges that gap where a traditional broad soft environment, you can only schedule your collaboration meetings from your soft phone on your computer. You don't have all those controls on your actual cell phone. That's not the case here. I can, I can create the meeting, schedule the meeting, attend the meeting, watch another meeting from my mobile device and that's really what your customers want. Um, and so like just just consider that piece of it that that you need to bring that to the table um, and and to to probably our strength is that we're not here just to say hey you know we just want your UCAS I am not I'm gonna be way more greedy than that I want all of your customer service I, I want all of your multi location and I want to sell multi technologies to multi location customers and we are gonna do a great job for you and we would like to probably even lead, quite frankly, with what we're about to talk about because it's, when we talk about Sizzle and you talk about not being the same when you're engaging with your end user, this next product is, is really going to set you on a track to come off, you know, you just come off way heavier as, as a consultant when you start getting into this next segment that we're going to talk about and we are absolute experts in it and it will really pave the path for everything else. And the last thing I'd say is this. If you've ever sold $10,000 worth of hosted, you paid the price for it. How many users? Betty in accounting. What is she, well, how do we have to have the, how many queues? How many calls? How many seats? How many phones? How many switches? How many everything, right? It, you pay the price if you sell a big hosted deal. And then I found something out. I can sell 10 grand worth of bandwidth and SD-WAN and get paid the same and I don't have to go down the rabbit trails deep. And we can add hosted to it if you want, but I'm just telling you, you, if you guys are getting paid the same, how much time do you want to put into something for the return? So we believe that our connectivity, multi-location with our security SD-WAN product is an amazing way to get in the game. I'll give you this last thing, and I promise, and we'll probably slide over to Jeff, if that makes sense. And Jeff, you can make your way up and maybe start the transition here. He was gonna give you a little bit. Oh, okay, you'll talk more? Yeah, let him, let him line up. But I, I, I came on board with Call One. I had a customer that asked for connectivity, and then we had a conversation about security. We drove it to security, and in 10 days, we have a contract for eight grand, SD-WAN, full, full shoot and match. And I, and I looked at Gabe, and I'm like, this, some, I feel like I've been beaten in the corner, and I didn't even know this, like, this existed, because there's, I can't write eight grand and host it in 10 days as a whole. You'd probably say, yeah, you're right, John. It, you're going to have to go way deeper into that thing to get it. And so it's an exciting product. And by the way, the agent that brought us in didn't even ask for security. He was like, hey, we want to sell bandwidth. But to the, to the, to the point of having a team that's going to get in there, we're going to help increase the revenue on the account and increase why it makes sense to do business with you and, and uh, ultimately with Call One. So, so that's that. I'll slide it back. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks. I'll stop sweating. So nice. we're, we're, that's I a good work. sign. Voice, obviously, we do the SIP trunking. We do, you know, voice is, has not changed much, but we are a native SIP platform. The meta switch, we own those two meta switches, by the way. They're tied into our platform. A lot of times providers will go out and buy wholesale voice and then resell it. It's just another layer for you to have to deal with. We do own those two meta switches. We do do a natural, a native SIP, but we can lab label it as PRI or analog with those ad trains. Continuity services, um, you know, for us, this is that accession piece, but I'll talk to that a little bit. That's the, you know, they, that's what Meta's really good at. They didn't go out and create their own because a lot of times when you create your own, it becomes bulky. They found something that was really good and that people knew and they bolted that on the back of their, their, their Meta switch. It's a Zoom platform, right? So we don't have to keep everybody guessing, right? It's a lot like your platforms are used over and over and over and over again. So it, it's really nice for customer to be able to do that and ease that transition. But I do want to, I'm going to bring up Jeff, but I do want to talk about SD-WAN and why we went the direction we did. So we had multiple vendors come in, right? We looked at everybody and we chose Versa for a reason that, you know, obviously there's about three good reasons we chose it. We like that you didn't have to go to the gateway to get out. So what that means is when I charge a customer, I don't have to charge them for upload and download. So if they have a 100 meg, bo 100 meg connection, I don't have to put them in the 200 meg box. With some of our competition, you have to go to a gateway so they charge you upload and download. So if I give a 100 by 100 connection, I have to buy a 200 meg software box. With Versa, it's only the download, right? So a 100 meg connection is only a 100 meg box. 
Also, when it doesn't have to go to the gateway, you lose that latency and jitter that comes with it. But the main thing and the number one reason we went with Versa is the security all in one platform. So it's a next generation firewall. It's got IDS, IPS, full UTM, and it can handle the security of a next generation firewall all in one box and all with one portal. So Jeff's going to show you that portal so you can go back and forth from analytics to security where a lot of our competitions are doing it with one piece of hardware. They're doing two virtual port portals. So that was a big decision for us because as these customers leave MPLS, what they liked about MPLS was, I'm on my private network, nobody can get in, right? I, can, I connect it, it's my own pipe, right? As you leave that, as a lot of our, comp a lot of our customers are doing, to go to an SD-WAN IP configuration, the first thing that question should, be, the question should be asked is, what are we doing for security? And when we talk to customers, the number one thing they want to do is they want to get out of the MPLS business. I hear it all the time. I want out of the MPLS business, I want to get it, I want an IP connection that I can control, do all those things. And then I ask the question, okay, great, you're going to get SD-WAN box, what are you doing for security? So you want to get out of the MPLS business and into the managed firewall business, right? So it's, it's a play that has to be talked about. And with our competition, a lot of times, you've got to bring another party in. So now I have to pay for the SD-WAN, and now I have to bring a security play after that. Is that another portal? Is that another maintenance? Is that another engineer I have to pay for? You know? So those are the things that you have to be talking to your customers about, and those are the things that we can help you talk to your customers about. Because when they see this portal, and they understand the next generation firewall tied into their SD-WAN, and they see the cost of it, it's, it's a lot of times, guys, it's a no-brainer because they want out of that managed service. And we will work with them, right? We're not going to hold them hostage for three weeks to open up port 6560 for a phone. We can do a shared management of it, right? So, hey, you can do these things, but you can't do these things. Or we can say all or nothing, right? If you want to control everything, you control everything. But if you need our help later, we are going to charge you. So there's a bunch of different flavors we can go with this SD WAN. And that's the overall, overall theme of what we're talking about, flexibility. We want to come in and we want to be a solutions provider. That is where we bring value to you. That is where we bring value to the agent, to the customer. That's where we differentiate ourselves. Over the top UCAS, there's a lot of noise in that space. Can we do it? Yes, very me too. Data has now become a commodity, right? Race to zero. Can we sell individual data? Absolutely. SD-WAN, can we sell it over the top? Absolutely. But bringing all those things in, your primary internet, your backup internet, your UCAS, and your SD-WAN, and putting it all in one carrier, oh, by the way, that's small, nimble, and answers the phone and takes care of you, is really our pitch and what we want to do. So I want to leave you with that. That's our target market, right? Multi-location customers that are looking for a carrier to, to aggregate everything and then a better experience on the back end. Okay, with that, I'm going to give you Jeff. Thank you, thank you. And I'll say first that uh, my first act, I'm going to show you how long I've been in the industry by putting on my cheaters because I can't see my computer without them. Uh, no, but uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to share. Uh, just to give you a quick idea of what uh, I'm going to go over with you today is just a reflection of what we have in a lab environment. Uh, so in our Chicago and Dallas Pops, uh, we've got both MPLS and Internet Circuit set up uh, with SD-WAN hub and branch uh, devices. Uh, we also have a couple of uh, uh, VM uh, machines set up uh, and uh, some WAN emulation boxes that are um, useful in injecting traffic into the network. Uh, to show some of the rules and uh, capabilities of the SD-WAN solution. So in logging in, I was logged in a second ago, it always uh, takes about two seconds to get there, first time in. but. Um, You'll see the, uh, the navigation bar uh, that allows you to traverse um, throughout the portal and, uh, and get access to the uh, various parts of your SD-WAN network solution. So as I mentioned, uh, across the top, you've got your navigation bar. You've got uh, real-time monitoring of traffic uh, that's available. Obviously, your configuration and setup and all your workflows uh, and administration, and then your analytics. Uh, your analytics section is really historical data, and uh, within the analytics arena, you've got uh, your dashboards as well as all of your logs. 
Uh, dashboards give you all the pretty graphs and understanding of uh, what's drilling in on traffic. Logs are the, uh, the heavy uh, data for all those guys who want to crunch um, out the numbers. But uh, as I mentioned, on a basic uh, MPLS and internet uh, lab environment, you've got the ability to drill into and see the total amount of bandwidth uh, that is being utilized across your network uh, and top access by uh, your different circuits. You've got the ability to drill into your specific sites and uh, this is just represented again by our Chicago and Dallas POPs, uh, but you've got the ability to, from a site map perspective, uh, drill in to a, those specific circuits and see uh, what you've got from a session volume and bandwidth perspective. Yeah, so drilling down into your specific connections, you've got the ability to look at uh, your usage, availability, uh, the connections, uh, you know, so you can see that, you know, over the course of the last uh, 24 hours, we've been up 100% of the time. Uh, if it was down, you would see red on these. Uh, you've got the ability to take a look at your connections um, and, um, and then your heat mapping as well. So uh, if you want to drill into specific time frames on usage, it's just a grab and pull and you can uh, get real deep into the traffic that's running across those networks. And this is something that MPLS really doesn't give our customers. SD-WAN has truly revolutionized the ability to um, troubleshoot and understand what really is going on inside a connection all the way down to the user level, the application level. Uh, so it gives you the ability, your customers the ability, to really see into their network and support their end user experience. Uh, as Gabe mentioned, you've got the ability to um, see analytics related to your security, to your applications, uh, to everything within the firewall. You've got the ability to set up uh, configurations of uh, how you want traffic to be managed. You've got the ability to uh, define all of your networking functions within the SD-WAN environment and uh, the services you have running in the network. Um, you've got the ability to fully um, define rules for your next-gen firewall solutions, um, the ability to block uh, specific categories of traffic and access to specific types of sites. Um, you can block categories but then whitelist spe specific sites. Uh, so there's tremendous flexibility uh, in defining user groups and uh, traffic availability. And I think it's worth mentioning. They, these user groups are defined. Versa puts, I think, 2,800 applications already preloaded in the system. So it's not like you have to go in, upload them, find them, put them in groups. They're all defined. And, and like Jeff said, you can say, hey, I don't want sports, but I want to whitelist ESPN. So they can go to, can't go to any other sports but ESPN. And then you can take that by the user. And we actually go by the subset even deeper. So YouTube is one, YouTube.com. But then YouTube video is a different, right? So I can go to YouTube video if I just have YouTube. Got we can take it seven, seven layers down on that. So yeah. it is important to understand that by, by group, by representation, we can give them different access to different information. Yeah, so to Gabe's point, you know, just for, for showing customers the ability to do these sort of things, we've blocked access to sports. Um, I've logged on to one of the Ubuntu boxes in our uh, lab environment and hit the NFL network and uh, I get a blocked page. But similarly, I can jump into ESPN and because we've whitelisted that specific site, drive through to that traffic. You actually could, Dan. You you could increase productivity. Or help you win the league. Help you win the league. Yes. The only one that can research Dan Dan's in his own user group over there. <laughs> Uh, the other great thing about uh, managing traffic across the SDAWAN network is to set up rules uh, with SLA parameters. So uh, if you have a specific uh, type of traffic that you want to ensure uh, continues um, across the network, uh, you've got the ability to reroute that traffic automatically depending on specific parameters uh, that are hit within the network. And you decide those parameters, right? The customer sets the SLA. So if they say, 300 milliseconds of jitter is too much, and then I want to hit the other connection, they can define that, right? And we can give them yeah. a subset of rules, but they can go in and change that at any time. So you can have your most important applications that can't have latency and jitter running over the cleanest pipe you have available. 
yeah, to show you some real time uh, realization of that, uh, we've got a, a ping test running right now uh, between Dallas and Chicago with 40 milliseconds round trip, trip latency on it. I'm going to uh, use this WAN emulation device and I'm going to eject uh, a little bit of traffic into the network and and you'll see that uh, that traffic jump. But because of the rule sets that we have of we want to reroute that traffic within 10 seconds, that latency is going to drop because we've automatically rerouted that traffic over the backup circuit. Yeah, we're supposed to think that was cooler. <laughs> <laughs> we can't read it. Yeah. So it was 40 and he ejected 300 and went to 340. Yeah. And it showed 340 and then you could see it drop down to 40 milliseconds. Like I said, we could get into this and do a demo, a live demo for you guys. I just wanted you to get a sneaky peek into the portal because it is important to understand that all of this stuff is taking one pane of glass, one portal. And that's, that's not a common occurrence. The analytics and all the things you could set up are, are, are not commonly happening in one portal. And so you have multiple portals and multiple headaches you have to go through. This is, this is the seller of, of what we're doing in SD-WAN. And I think it's important to understand, we've got a team of engineers that are supporting this solution, working through all of the details with the customer up front of what kind of rule sets need to be in place, building that in the network for them, and then depending upon what level of access they're interested in seeing, whether it's read-only, uh, if they want the ability to manage some of the uh, security components, um, we've got the ability to support different levels of access and, and, uh, and administration within the solution. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Well, sir. All right. All right, Jeff. Awesome. Guys, in closing, uh, first closing, not season. In closing, I just I want to uh, just thank you guys for your time and attention again. And I also want to invite you to consider, just consider a different approach uh, when you talk about call one uh, with me as a resource, um, you can check out my credentials. Uh, I will not embarrass you in front of your customer. I promise you I can help uh, bring some stuff to, to roost for you. And uh, the way we do it is it's a team approach. And um, if we can get engaged with your customers, I promise you, you're going to see some of your closing ratios begin to increase and you're going to see, um, you're just going to see some value that we're going to bring to the table. And, uh, and we're excited about that. So I, I manage the state of Florida, I manage the Southeast. Uh, I want to be engaged with you. Uh, I'd like to, you don't need to know everything about Call One from a presentation standpoint. We really do the heavy lifting. So uh, what you see today is a, a kind of a similar take on what uh, one of your customers would experience. Uh, and we'll tailor uh, fit that presentation to, uh, to what they're interested in. But willing to have the conversations uh, around security and it's going to lead us to some good things. So thank you again.